So as promised, we will now consider the same linear transformation with respect to the standard basis in R3. And if you haven't done this already on your own, you should probably pause the video and attempt this calculation on your own because I think you will really enjoy deriving the neat answer and coming to your own conclusions. And then you can check back with the video and see if your conclusions agree with ours. So let's carry out the familiar algorithm. Our vectors are now called S1, S2, and S3. So we need to apply the linear transformation to each one of these vectors and decompose the result with respect to the same basis. So let's start with S1, T of S1. So the transformation is the same. The sum of the first two entries, their difference, and the last entry multiplied by three. So it will be one, one, zero. That's right, one, one, zero. And once again, it's not this vector that goes as the first column of the resulting matrix. It is its components with respect to the basis we're working with. And what are the components of this vector with respect to the basis we're working with? Well, it's one, one, zero. This basis is distinguished by the fact that components with respect to this basis equal the entries of the vector. It's the only basis like that. So it is these numbers, after all, that end up in the first column of this matrix. One, one, zero. Now let's do the same thing for S2. And it will be, once again, the sum, the difference, and the last entry multiplied by three, so the sum is one. The difference is now minus one, one, minus one, zero. One, minus one, zero decomposing this vector with respect to the same basis is once again one, negative one, zero. So that's what goes here. One, negative one, zero. All right, and finally for R3, for S3, it's zero, zero, three. Zero, zero, three. And once again, the components of this vector with respect to this basis are zero, zero, and three. So that's what goes into this column. All right, and we're done. But are you noticing something? Well, of course you do. The resulting matrix is the same as the matrix that defined the transformation. So typically, actually for all bases except this one, the resulting matrix is different from the matrix that defines it. But this matrix reappears once again as the matrix that represents this linear transformation in the component space when the basis with respect to which you're performing your analysis is the standard basis. So the standard basis has many special features and one of them is that with respect to this basis, the matrix that represents the linear transformation happens to be the exact same matrix as the one defining the transformation. So it's a very special case. Typically that matrix is different, but in this one special case, the matrix is the same. All right, next we'll consider an even more special basis, and that will be food for lots of thought and fodder for a great discussion.